Hello Sterling, Colorado and all you YouTubers out there. Michelle Mead with the Nostalgic Ceramic Studio. Today I'm going to be doing a very, very beginner hand building class for you. If you've never hand built before, you can do these pots and I'll show you some different techniques you can use and some different materials you have if you don't have, uh, you know, a studio that is full of equipment. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can get a an air dry clay you don't even have to have a kiln so if you are a very beginner potter this video is for you let's go okay real quickly we're going to go through some of the tools that we're going to need to go ahead and make uh, just these trinket dishes today so for starters um and if you don't have these at home that's fine but if you do you can use them uh, otherwise, uh, you don't need them. You don't need any of these tools to be successful. So to start off, we're gonna go ahead and use some cookie dough rolling pins that I have. I have hearts and um, flowers for Valentine's Day. I have obviously my white stoneware clay that I'm using. This is a mid-range clay, cone 5-6 for those who um, follow along on what clay body is being used. If you don't have a kiln at home, you can use air dry clay, that's just fine. Just remember that if you use air dry clay, it is not watertight or water safe. So um, you couldn't run it through the dishwasher or anything like that, so. All right, I have a couple of molds here. I've got a cookie cutter. I've got a, a mushroom tool. I've got a rib a brush and a stylus tool. So if you don't have a slab roller at home, what you can do is go to your local hardware store and just buy a yardstick, cut it in half. These are the perfect width for a slab of clay. You can roll your slab out between these two rolling pins. Sorry, you can roll your slab out between these two uh, pieces of wood and I will do a more in-depth detailed video on how to do that at a later date. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna make a few different trinket dishes. Oh, one more thing. I have this foam pad, um, which is really use, can really come in useful for um, making dishes. So we're gonna go ahead and compress our clay here. And I am using the Mud Tools yellow rib to do this whatever rib you have is fine. I prefer this one because the rib itself is kind of um, stiff. It doesn't bend as easily as the other ribs do. It's more firm. So I can really apply quite a bit of pressure as I'm compressing the clay. And that's important to prevent cracking. It's also important to uh, get out any air bubbles. Um, and to give your clay a, a memory um, into whatever form it's gonna eventually be. So it's very important to compress. I'm giving quite a bit of firm pressure here. I mean, I'm not, I'm not pushing it hard enough to indent the clay, but almost to that point, I'm, I'm pushing pretty firmly. And you go ahead and do that to both sides of your slab. So we're just gonna lift this up, flip it over, and do that again. On the other side. And you know what? I'm gonna go and grab myself one more of these little um, cookie cutters. Okay, so what I have here are some fondant stamps. You can buy them real cheaply on Amazon. I wanna go ahead and make some um, tea bag uh, holders because um, I like using them and they're a popular item um, in the local shop that I sell my work in. And they're a perfect beginner project. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by, let's see here, we're gonna start off with um, tea bag. I'm just gonna stamp that in there. Oh, 
Oh, here, I think I've got this wrong. Make sure that your um, fondant stamps are going in the correct direction or you'll end up with a word that isn't a word. I almost put in tea gab. Okay, tea bag. And then I'm just gonna lift that up, make sure that's not sticking to the table, which it did. Good thing we checked, because I printed that too deeply in. So we'll just start again in another area. T bag. Okay. Now I'm gonna line this up on my cookie cutter. Stamp that out. Set that aside because we'll go ahead and stamp that later. So I'm just going to set that over here for now. And then I want to make another one to go with it, but the other one that I'm making says old bag. And that's just kind of funny. <laughs> and it's kind of my thing and what I do. I've got one, I've got a set of two tea bags that I sell and one dish says tea bag and the other dish says old bag. So I'm gonna make a couple of those. And I'm actually gonna move on to the next thing just so I can kind of show you um, all of the different dishes you can make before I finish making the rest of those on the slab. So let's go ahead and look at some of the other dishes that we can make that are beginner friendly. So one of them would be to use what is called, this would be considered a hump mold. It's by GR Pottery Forms. And you can drape your fabric over the top of that and compress it down with the rib. Or you can do what I'm going to do and um, smash it into the foam pad right here. So I'm going to start by taking here. Let me make sure you can see everything I'm doing. I'm going to start by taking this piece right here and just laying it down on my piece of clay. This tool wasn't at the beginning of the video, but it's a fettling knife and it's always real handy to have one of these in the studio. I'm going to cut this not perfectly. I'll make it more round later, but I'm just going to cut it slightly bigger than my piece. I'm gonna set that down here on my foam mat. I'm gonna take my mold and just push it down. And while it's pushed down, I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut off the excess clay. flip that over. This has to sit on here for probably a good 20 to 30 minutes before I can pull it off. Uh, the clay is too damp to pull off right away. You do want to pull it off. You don't want it to sit on there for too long. You want to pull it off before it gets too dry. Otherwise it can cause some cracking on the piece. Typically they don't stick to the GR pottery forms, but I have had them stick before. So then we can just go ahead and set that aside. That's another way to make those. Then let's go ahead and roll some texture into one of these. I'm gonna do a heart texture right here. Okay, so let's say that you don't have any of these tools at home. You don't have cookie cutters, you don't have um, stamps, you don't have anything. You just have yourself some air dry clay. You can use whatever kitchen knife you have and you can just freeform cut out a piece. 
and make a very organic piece. Just like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. And so then what you can do is you can just kind of coax the sides up a little bit like this. And you've got yourself a little trinket dish that's a very organic form and shape. If you wanted it to be very simple, you don't even have to use a texture. You can just do one without any texture at all. Let's move this out of the way a second. Okay. Um, once those are a little bit more leather hard, I'll go through and smooth the edges. And real quickly, I just kind of want to show you what this mushroom tool is for. I use this for my tea bags. And we have our tea bag here. I'm gonna try and get that as centered on the piece of clay as I can. And I'm just gonna do this number. See if it'll come off of there without distorting it too bad. clay's a little bit damp right now, but you get the idea. So we have a tea bag and we have an old bag, old tea bag that is. <laughs> I give that one to my grandma. She laughs. <laughs> so you can let that dry on there for just a minute so that it comes off easier. And then somebody had suggested to me or wanted to make a, um, a ring dish. And so I was like, well, how could we turn these cute little things into a ring dish? And so really the only thing, uh, you would need a few more tools if you wanted to do that because we're gonna be slipping and scoring here. So let me go grab my slip. And I was thinking that these pieces could be, um, they're already kind of very organic looking and I kind of like that about them. And so going on with that theme, I kind of wanted to make the ring holder piece in the center there kind of organic too. So all I'm doing is rolling myself out a sausage type form and shaping it into what would be considered a, a cone, I guess, that would hold my rings. I'm gonna stamp it down on the bottom just to flatten that bottom piece out a little. And we're gonna slip and score both sides. I, I put a lot of slip on and I score a lot. Like pieces will pop off if you don't do this part really well. Sometimes you can kind of wiggle it around and jiggle it and you'll feel when it grabs. You'll feel when the clay grabs. Just kind of make sure that's going, standing up in the right direction that I want it to. Then from here, all you really have to do is take a brush and clean that up.
This would be a really great project to do with air dry clay because you don't have to get it, uh, you're not gonna be using it in the dishwasher or anything like that. And if you had no tools at home, all you had was clay, I mean, even if you didn't have any rollers, you could make this. And it's very simple and pretty and elegant. And it's like the perfect size to set next to your kitchen sink. I think I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I was thinking about how, here, let's try it. How could I roll out a cone that had texture on it? Let's see. Oh, I shouldn't have gone backwards. Okay, let's see if we can kind of make a cone shape. out of a piece of clay. Oh, I'm a little stuck. Okay. So here I'm just kind of pinching the edges so that it doesn't crack as I mold it here. Hmm, I think it needs to be smaller, unless you've got really big fingers, which I do not. So, okay, so you can kind of still see the texture there after we've shaped that a little bit. So we'll slip and score that one on. Right. Well, I think that one still has a few little hearts that you can see in the front there. So that's another way to do it if you have a textured one and you're wanting to keep that texture. All right, so those are cute. Here's my, my tea bag and my old bag here. Let's see if I can pull this off of there without ruining the edge. Old bag and tea bag, little trinket dishes. If you are lucky enough to have a mold that you can use at home, you can use a bowl or any form really can set that there. There's a little trinket dish. Got quite a bit of clay left here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda cut that off. Um, this clay is still very soft, so I'm gonna wedge it up and um, I'll just reuse it. There's no reason to put this into the reclaim. So let's go ahead and do our another tea bag. And old bag. These will be available, the tea bag, an old bag will be available at Sterling Creatives in the coming weeks if you're local. Um, if you're not, I hope you try to make your own. Uh, these probably wouldn't work for air dry clay. You probably would need a kiln for them, but you can find, um, you know, if, 
if you don't want to use air dry clay, which you probably couldn't for these because they are going to get wet, um, you can find your local pottery studio and see if they will fire it for you. Just get yourself some uh, whatever, whatever clay that local studio suggests that you use. Um, that's a great resource for information. You don't have to have a kiln to do pottery. So we've got little heart tea bag, old bag for Valentine's. That would be a funny Valentine's gift. <laughs> that would be cute. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't think I spread that out far enough for that one. Uh, if you are local, oh no, oh, that's okay. We'll just do it again right here. Old bag. I don't know what happened, but I didn't get the rest of that video. So, um, here I am at our local gallery, Sterling Creatives. I'm filming, filming the rest of that video for you. So um, what I was about to say is that if you are local, we're gonna be holding a workshop to make these trinket dishes on February 16th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. at the Nostalgic Ceramics Studio. Um, and that workshop, we're gonna kind of cover a little bit about what tools we can use. Um, we're gonna be covering topics such as where you can get those tools. We're also gonna just kind of be learning the very basics of building these um, simple pots and um, answering any other questions the beginners may have. So in our workshop, you're gonna be getting uh, two pounds of clay and we're gonna be rolling those slabs out ourselves. We're not gonna be using the slab roller for these. Um, and then we're gonna kind of go from there. That way you have the very basic skills that you need to uh, build the pots from, from scratch with everything that you have at home already. So um, don't think that you can't do pottery if you don't have a kiln. So we're gonna be going over all of that. So I hope you all uh, join in. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.